So you're thinking about moving to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Well, in today's show, we're gonna tell you all the reasons why you do not want to move to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And we're gonna get after it right now. I have with me today, Randy Wallace. He is a 46 year real estate veteran, broker in charge here of Keller Williams. Uh, he's going to be on our show walking through all those reasons why you do not want to move to Myrtle Beach. Um, and if it's your first time to our channel, please subscribe below and tap the bell for notifications uh, so that you can be the first to learn about market changes in the Myrtle Beach area. Now, we get calls and emails every day from people just like you looking to make that move to Myrtle Beach. Uh, so whether you're one month or three years out, please give us a call, send us a text message, shoot us an email, or, or jump on a live Zoom conference call all in the description below uh, so that we can help you make that smooth move to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. All right, so as I mentioned, we're talking about all the reasons why you don't want to move to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Our first reason is going to be weather. Randy, you want to take over? Yeah, humidity is a problem here for a lot of people. And if you're not used to the humidity of the South, humidity of warmer weather, uh, sometimes that can be a bother to people, both in winter and in summer. I mean, summertime might be it might be a pleasant 85 degree temperature outside, but if the humidity is 80%, then that's a little bit muggier than you might be used to. And the same can be true in the in the winter time as well. And our temperatures go up to about what during the summer? Uh, summertime usually up to about 95 degrees. It can be you know in the upper 90s, but usually it's around 85, 95. But it can be hot and humid, and a lot of people stay indoors for that. If that's going to bother you, then that may be a reason not to come to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> yes. Now, I will say that it's not nearly as humid as Florida, right? No, uh, it's not as bad as Florida and some other areas uh, may have worse humidity. Uh, we don't get a lot of complaints about it, but for some people, it's a little transition. Yeah, you can imagine. During the summertime, you're getting in the car. You cannot wait to get the AC on because sweat is running down your back. That yeah. stuff does happen here. So uh, Get into the air conditioning. <laughs> get into the we AC. We love air conditioning. <laughs> you better believe it. So on, on to the second reason uh, why you shouldn't move here uh, would have to be the bugs. Yeah, and that's kind of related to the humidity there, Brandon, because, because of humidity, we have mosquitoes and we have a little thing called palmetto bugs. Now, we, that's our romantic name for roaches. Oh man, yeah, it's ugly. So we have a lot of roaches in houses. Now, how do you combat that? Obviously, we have a lot of pest control. And uh, even mosquitoes, I've had a group come, say, come sprays my yard for mosquitoes about every three weeks in the summertime. And it's a great service. So yeah, there are ways you can combat it, but. But yeah, we have um, more than our share of mosquitoes, more than our share of palmetto bugs. Uh, and, and, and you don't notice much if you treat it, but you have to have pest control. You better believe it. Now, something that's big in our market is termites. And we always do something called a CL100. We always advise our clients to do a CL100. And that checks for, you know, termites, you know, dry rot, fungus and stuff like that. But termites happens to be something that's a pretty big deal in our area. Can you talk a little bit to yeah, that? Because if you have that humidity and you've got moisture, then you've got termites in that moist ground. Mm -hmm. Now we, you know, all houses and homes are, everything new construction is, is treated for termites. And we have a lot of, again, termite pest control here. So, uh, but again, if you have an older home, you gotta make sure there are no termites here. You can't forget that there's always a threat of termites yep, so in wanna, our coastal area. You wanna make sure that they are always, that your home is always being treated for termites. I need to do that. I need to get my home treated again. It's been on my mind lately. I need to get it done. Anyways, okay, so people generally ask about snakes and alligators. <laughs> you know, when you're in the warmer weather, they want to know about that. Uh, well, we have we have snakes and alligators, but again, that's, that's very location specific at the beach. If you live in a highly populated area that, uh, you know, like in the middle of Myrtle Beach and most of the towns that are here, alligators and snakes are not a problem. You get out into the countryside a little bit, or you get down south around any community that's got a lot of ponds and low country areas, a lot of wetlands, 
That's where alligators close to the river, Come on. close to the waterway. There are alligators in some communities. Now you can totally avoid them. Like I say, it's pretty site specific, but uh, but you do want to pay attention that there's some people that come down here saying they're shocked. They got, they, they move in their new home, they see an alligator in the backyard. <laughs> well, you know, if you're close to a pond in that low country area, they may be there, so check on that. And it's a very uh, real sure. thing. We had an alligator issue in our neighborhood, you know, just this past year. It's a very, very real thing. A guy was, anyways, I don't want to go into details of it, but the point is, in some neighborhoods, it is a thing. Now, when you mentioned the waterway just recently, he's referring to the intercoastal waterway, which is very different from the ocean. So, yeah. you know, we don't have, you know, you, you pretty much don't have to worry about very many snakes down at the ocean. No, close to the ocean, there's less of a problem, but inland in those wetlands areas yep. river areas uh that's that's where you got alligators and snakes wonderful wonderful well the next reason why you would not want to move to myrtle beach south carolina is we actually have higher utilities and some higher insurance costs now those insurance costs generally are car and home insurance you want to talk a little bit about yeah well the home insurance it we have a lot of areas that require flood insurance mm -hmm. so that uh, is a requirement if you have a loan so that that surprises some people they've got an extra five or six hundred dollars insurance bill right. that they got to add on top of their normal bill mortgage the other thing is again closer to the beach uh, you have a lot of companies that exclude wind and hail so now they have to have three policies they have a regular insurance policy and they have a wind and hail policy, and they have a flood insurance policy, and that tends to drive the cost up, you know, thousand dollars plus or minus more per year yep. than That's maybe right. in an, another location. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And utilities. Now, those are a little bit higher in our area, but let's talk about those winners. Even though the utilities might be about five percent higher than elsewhere in the nation, is that right? Yeah, we're we're about. It, that's one of the few things where we're above the national average as far as cost because our utilities are a little bit higher in the state of South Carolina. Uh, but uh, again, if you have a really rough winter up north, right, that's going to pull a lot more electricity and heat and you know. Uh, cost than you would have here because our winters aren't that absolutely that extreme yep. you should not have a high uh winter bill from your utilities you're probably going to end up saving money i'd imagine if you're moving from up north or someplace that's super super cold you're probably going to have a much yeah, more you'll, you'll save some in winter but you may have a little bit higher cost that's in the summertime true. that's true too because you're gonna run a lot of that ac we <laughs> talked about that's right <laughs> yeah you better believe that especially when uh when it's 103 sometimes, you know, it's, it's up there and that, that humidity's running, you're probably gonna be using that AC. Okay, so let's move right along. The next reason why you don't wanna move here is traffic. Now, we do have a little bit of seasonal congestion. Now, our peak season here, if you don't know it, Myrtle Beach uh, runs mainly off tourism. I mean, I would dare to say probably, um, just a guess in my opinion, 70% of our market probably runs off of it, tourism. It's related to the tourism yeah. and construction and real estate, mm -hmm. all that bundled together. And yeah, there's a lot of traffic. Now, yeah. you know, uh, it, it can be, again, if you're going in the, the wrong times, the wrong way. You know, in the mornings, uh, early, uh, in the afternoons when, when people are getting off work. Yeah, and, and those times when people are coming in the beach on the weekends, they're pouring yeah. in here on Fridays, Fridays. and Saturdays yep. and pouring out on Saturdays and Sundays yep. and Mondays. So sometimes it's heavier than others. So. Uh, yeah, those those peak traffic times, and again, that's depending on location. We got a lot of people. You know, you move out in the country, you're not going to oh, yeah. feel it as much at all. But anywhere close to our highly populated areas. Now, when you say country, you mean like Conway, yeah, Lawrence, just out in Ainer, the county, 20 miles from the beach, things like the beach. that. Yeah. you're you're not going to experience it as much. But the more highly populated areas, then yes, it's not just our population because our population is say 450,000 throughout the coastal two county area. Mm -hmm. uh, but in summertime, that population oh, is really about over a million yeah, because so. you got a lot of guests here. So you can imagine for, you know, d during that, that 12 weeks of the summer, could traffic hits 
probably uh, seasonal highs. And uh, if you're in Myrtle Beach, around Myrtle Beach, around those 60 mile stretch of beaches in that two county area, then you're definitely gonna be running into yeah. a good bit of traffic. Yeah, a good bit of traffic. You know, we don't think it's anywhere near the, the big, big cities. cities. Yeah, nothing yeah. near the big it, cities. It, you know, we don't consider that bad, but when you're you know, in a basically a, what was a sleepy little beach town, and you experience this big traffic. Some people are shocked well, that they have some happened? traffic issues yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so just be prepared for that. Man, they have been putting stuff in. They've been putting. Pl there's plenty of roads. There's plenty of. There's plenty of highways and stuff that you can take that can help you navigate alternative routes yeah. to get through that. But if you're again, if you expect to be, I'm expect to live right at the beach and go anywhere I want to go. Then you don't want to move here because you're yeah. going to have you're going to have some summer traffic. traffic. Yep, you're just going to have some traffic. High now, peak traffic. kind of talk a little bit about those campground days because uh, you know we have campgrounds here. We have Ocean Lakes. We have Apache. You know, there's there's a bunch of campgrounds here, and people come in on Fridays. They're going to stay there or Thursday nights, Fridays, Fridays gonna, and Saturdays. Fridays, Saturdays. You know, and they you know they're they're pulling RVs, right? That's right. They're yeah. pulling campers and RVs, so yep. they're bigger vehicles, and they're coming up. And they're filling up that highway space, so there are certain roads and certain times that are super congested. Come on, you know here in the summertime in particular when there are more people coming down. But again, you know we we learn to deal with it here. But again, if you're expecting to have just oh man, this this is like out in the countryside. Well, it's not like yeah, that. it's not going to be like that here. All right, so we're moving right along. The next reason why you would not want to move to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is hurricane season. We have hurricanes here. And uh, you want to kind of That's a pretty long hurricane yeah. season. It's, it's, it's officially from June, uh, 1st of June through the end of November. That's right. But the peak time is really August, September, October. So those three months yep. are, there's always the warning, the threat, the news. Well, there's one down in the Bahamas. Coming right now and it's there's, gonna be here in no yeah, time. There's one in the Gulf of Mexico. Go buy all your, your water and your and your gas and your food now. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're loaded up with warnings. We're, yes. you know, we're in an area that gets warned about it all the time. Uh, just heads up, uh, it, if I recall correctly, uh, the Wal one of the Walmarts here is the number one Walmart in the entire nation. Now that's probably largely attributed to all the campgrounds. Everybody's coming in, you know, they're buying stuff like that. But um, I can see why, you know, with all the with all the hurricane scares that we get. And I thought you were going to say they're the, the, the biggest for selling water, too, because everybody <laughs> goes out and buys all the bottled water, all the gallons of water. Yep. You know, when hurricane season comes, you go to the grocery store and all of a sudden there's nothing on some shelves. You better believe you know, it. And because they're all loading up for hurricane preparedness. Getting ready, yeah. But if that... If that scares you, you know, if that bothers you, again, that's a reason not to come to Myrtle Beach because you're going to get, even though we don't don't get hit that frequently, For real. we get three or four warnings a year easy, that, are, easy. that are fairly serious. And people tend to be pretty nervous about buying here, buying a home here with the fact that we have hurricanes here. And to be honest with you, you know, like, I mean, not that we don't have serious hurricanes from time to time because we do. But generally, it's it's not so much of an issue. Yeah, it, look, I live a half a block from the beach and have lived there for 35 years. And that location, well, really for 46 years because I lived on. in another location a block from the beach further north before that. But on my home where I've been there 35 years, I've not had one hurricane issue. Not one. Ever. In, ever. In, Half a block from the 46 beach. 46 years. Not one insurance claim. Thank you. You know, so it, it's... Thank you, Jesus. It's, that's right. I'm very thank, <laughs> thankful for that. But it's it's still, you know, do I get warnings? Do I get prepared? Yes. For do sure. I, do I, You know, are there some people who that would be too much on their nerves? Yeah, probably. Sure. So it might so, not be for you. Now, have you ever had to evacuate? Uh, I did evacuate for Hurricane Hugo 33 years ago. 30, 89, yeah, something 89. like that. 1989. That was the mm -hmm. only time I actually left my home and went inland. And my home was disturbed less than where I went 20 miles in. <laughs> wow, that's wild. So I, I wish I'd have stayed at home. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it was the right thing to do. That's right. With uh, four small kids at the mm -hmm. time. You know, so. 
anyway, it, it's it's uh, it's a worry. It's not so much a damage problem, although we have had plenty of storms. Yeah. We had one this year that would cause some damage to a lot of people. Uh, but it's more on the nerves than it is on the damages. Yep. So again, I don't think it's really anything that you really have to worry about. You know, people are always asking us, clients are always asking me, you know, what about flooding? What about hurricanes and stuff like that? It's, it's you know, with a, with a local realtor that makes the process simple and easy, we should be able to put you at ease, tell you, hey, this is not a flood area or this place has never flooded before or, you know, you really don't have to worry about that and it should help that process go a lot simpler and a lot easier. So moving on to our, our next one. Uh, now, th the reason why you don't wanna move here is because this place is flat. Now that might sound a little funny, it might sound a little different, uh, but honestly, it leads to certain drainage issues. Uh, you want to yeah. speak a little bit about it? Well, we're the coastal area. Yeah, that's we're right. We're not in the mountains, okay? Yep. Uh, the elevation change is from sea level, zero, yep. up to about 25 total, you know, and there's areas that, you know, but there are areas where we've done whole subdivisions before where we got uh, a couple hundred acres and there's not one foot of drop man there's only inches of drop across the whole area so, so you have to create a lot of drainage and we and inland in particular you know the, uh, the soils aren't the greatest along the beach you know you have sandier soils inland there's some a lot of clays and so it doesn't drain very well and when you don't have great soil yep. when it absorbs and you don't have any elevation change it's going to pile up then it's going to have some puddles yep. in the streets That's and right. puddles in your yard and so it's, it is, you can eliminate a lot of it through good drainage plans. That's right. And a good builder who, who slopes your yard and your house correctly. Yep. So grading is a huge issue here. Grading's a big issue here. But hey, you know, there's going to be an, some times when you have some puddles and some standing water to deal with. So again, that bothers some people and they, can't, they think their house is going to flood because they got a puddle, you know, a big puddle in the backyard. Yeah. That's not necessarily the case, but again, it's a worry issue. And it is a design issue. You want to. There are some neighborhoods that have some issues with drainage that you want to pay attention to. For another, sure. another reason to use a good realtor so you know <laughs> exactly what the, where, yeah. to, where yeah, to go. Outside of my neighborhood, you know, just down the street, we have this one spot that when it starts raining like crazy. We get a little bit of puddling. That stuff happens, man. It's it's a very very r real thing. So moving right along to our next reason why you would not want to move to Myrtle Beach is top flight medical care and surgery. Now, you know I would argue a little bit on this one that the the landscape in our market's changing as far as medical. There's a lot of medical infrastructure being built here and being put in. You know we do have baby boomers retiring at a rate of 10,000 a day. And the trend is, for, from what I understand, they're moving to Myrtle Beach and to Florida. So, you know, we they, they, there are four hospital systems here already. Yeah, and two of those are, you know, relatively new, or well, new as far as expanding and what have you. So yeah. uh, I would make the argument that we're transitioning into a better, better medical in that, area. Absolutely. But what we don't have are those uh, top flight you know, like research hospitals, that's things right. like that, MUSC. university hospitals. You can go to MUSC in yep. Charleston. Well, that's 100 miles away. Right. Or you can go to Duke up in North Carolina. That's right. Or Bowman Gray up yep. in North Carolina. There's some top flight areas up there. And a lot of people go there for experts. But if you want to have those experts right here in your backyard, yep. well, there are not, and it's not too happen. many here. There are some. There are some. Uh, because, again, we have those four hospitals. And, and we have one that's very large. and and a couple of big growing hospitals right. that are moving in. So there are more and more coming here every day. But right now, again, to get that second opinion, to get that special surgery. Mm -hmm. Two hour drive. Then people are gonna drive two to four hours, four to, hours to yeah. get to that top hospital. So uh, again, that next, probably your next best bet, two hours away, Charleston, MUSC. It is a research uh, hospital. Now, moving on to our next one, no uh, no major highway. A reason why you would probably not want to move here is because there is no major highway, and the closest interstate is probably 95, Highway 95, 75 miles inland. Uh, so, you know, we do have a lot of, you know, expressways and interstates and, you well, know. Well, you know, it was a big deal to get Highway 22 coming in and Highway 31 goes north and south. That's right. But still, that's just, 
two roads. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and neither one is connected to that's right. an interstate. Yep, yeah, that's right. So there's still there's a lot of stoplights to go through to get to an interstate. A lot of little towns and slowdowns yep. and what have you, congestion spots. Yep. So if you're used to just hey, I get to the expressway and I'm gone anywhere in the world. That's, That's not, gonna not a reality here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our market is, you know, in the next 10 years, we should double our population. Is that right? In, yes, in yes. Just about the next 10 years. So all that being said, you know, we are still a small city, even though we are growing. And sometimes we have a much larger population when all the, you know, all, all the tourism shows up. Uh, but we are still very much a, a smaller city. Yeah. So, uh, again, the, having the top connection to transportation is not us we have good roads but we're not we're not uh, the expressway territory now moving right along to our next uh, our next reason why you would not want to move to Myrtle Beach southern charm now for many people you know southern charm is everyone's polite everyone's saying hello people are very welcoming they uh, you know they will you know shake your hand you know help you out stop to help you change a tire Stuff like that happens all the time here. However, uh, after you know briefly interviewing someone from New York, she let me know very quickly that things tend to move a little bit slower here in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, Southern charm for some people means are you just not used to getting it done. <laughs> they want I want service now. Yeah, speed now. I want to bring in my car and get my oil changed in five minutes. We have our quickie lube. That's quickie right. Places That's right. they can do it, but overall. We tend to move a little bit slower. A little bit slower, yeah. And happens. we're not in yeah. as big a rush. Now, that's an asset to some, but it's a detriment to some. Some people come here and get highly frustrated. That's right. That they can't get quick service on certain things. And so that may be a reason why, you know, why some people may not want to move here. And other people might love it. They might love the slower pace of life. They move here. They can relax more. Everything's not so rush, rush, rush. Get it done get it done so but for for those of you looking for that you know super fast paced environment where everybody's going 90 miles an hour uh our southern charm might slow things down a little bit for you and it might not work well for you now moving on to our next point as to why you would not want to move to myrtle beach there is no major airport i mean i described it as a major airport we do have an international airport it's just not as it's a little bit limited yeah it's uh you got to connect pretty much everywhere you go through Charlotte or through Atlanta. So it might be a little bit less choices, a little bit longer connections. Um, you know, some of the costs aren't really aren't too bad, but some may cost a little bit more to, to certain locations. And there's not really a great one close. I mean, Charlotte is the closest. You know, Charleston's not much bigger than, than Myrtle Beach Airport. Uh, Columbia, the same thing. But Charlotte's a big airport, so if you want to get to a big airport, you want to drive to a big airport, you'd have to drive three and a half hours to Charlotte yep. to get to that big airport, which has tons of flights going everywhere. everywhere. That's right. Now, moving right along, our next one is, our next reason why you would not want to move to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, is a lack of public transportation compared to some of your larger cities. It's right. probably, probably going to feel like we don't have public transportation. We have public transportation. It's just probably not nearly as comprehensive as some of the transportation. Yeah. And, it, and it's really only located in Myrtle Beach. There's really not much at all <laughs> north on our south end beaches, our north end beaches, inland, uh, in the Conway area. It's pretty much a rural, that's a rural area. So even though there are a lot of population, there is new neighborhoods. A lot of out new neighborhoods, there, yep. There's still not. Uh, comparatively not much public transportation all right we are back moving on to our next one it is lack of public services now we have lower taxes here in our area which is a substantial benefit to most people uh, but it does uh, you know obviously it doesn't help us provide as uh, as comprehensive services public services as some of your major cities yeah just uh, some things like in, in whether it's in schools or even outside of school just government certain government services um, people who have speech problems, children with speech problems don't have as many speech therapy That's choices right. to go to. Um, but we do have choices, we just have not choices, as many. Just not as many. Uh, right. Autism, uh, people that help uh, assist families with 
with autism in their family, uh, you know, things like that. You know, we just don't have as many services. You know, there's there's something of everything here, but it's just not as comprehensive uh, or as easy to find as your major cities. In major cities. That's right. Yep. That's right. All right, moving right along, guys. Um, our next one is we have a lack of low-income housing. Now, this is something that's currently being addressed. Our countywide, statewide, really, our, our state is in the middle of and our local association of realtors is in the middle of trying to identify some of those areas. The city of Myrtle Beach itself is trying to identify some areas. We have a lack of low-income housing and affordable housing and what we call workforce housing. That's good. Now, there are some providers, there's a couple of developers who have done some low-income housing here in the city and out in the county, inland and uh, there are some locations both multifamily and single family uh, that have been addressed and we hope that's going to be addressed more in the future but uh, just to be honest with you you know if you're looking for a home you know under two hundred thousand dollars that's hard to find come on hard you hear to that? Find. Yeah, in our market i do searches all the time i have clients calling me all the time you know i've got 120,000, i've got 150 or under two hundred thousand it is going to be a difficult find for you. I mean, like when most people find out the options of what's available under that $200,000 price range in our market, uh, I feel like they don't, they're not necessarily so excited. You know, there's a lot of manufactured housing. There's a lot of manufactured housing on leased land, uh, which is, you know, it's yeah. not, not necessarily what people want. You know, they like to buy a nice, you know, two, three bedroom house for, you know, in that $200,000 price range. And there's just not a lot out there. Not a lot out there. As much as we need that workforce, as much as we uh, want uh, those people, both re retirees and workforce and young people to come here to our area, uh, you know, our choices aren't great. And so that may be a reason you may come here and not be satisfied. That would be a reason not to come, come on to our area. Low income housing. All right, now moving right along. Um, our next one is we don't have the best shopping. Now, let me just kind of parlay this a little bit. We got a lot of shopping. We have a lot of shopping. There's all kinds of outlets. There's Barefoot Landing. I mean, there's so much stuff here to do. As we got about 100 beachwear stores. I mean, we got like <laughs> thousands of beachwear stores. Um, but uh, we're talking about quality of shopping. Now, we do have our higher end spots like over in the Market Common. There's some, you know, your nice high end. Market Common, Coastal Grand Mall, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, Barefoot Landing. There are a lot of nice shopping areas. But what we don't have are some of those things that the big cities have, like an Apple store. That's we right. We don't have an Apple store. We don't store. have an Apple store, guys. We don't have a Whole Foods. We don't we, have a Trader Joe's. We don't have a Trader Joe's. So some of the things that you might be looking for in your larger cities, uh, we might we, we, we don't have it here So uh, as far as shopping goes. So now there is a lot to do, but that might be a reason for you not to move to Myrtle Beach. Now, moving on to our final reason why you don't want to move to Myrtle Beach. We're going to say the restaurants uh, are, are uh, there's not a lot of choices as far as higher end restaurants. Yeah, we, quality. we have thousands of restaurants. We have so many restaurants, guys. I mean, you know, I mean it, it's nuts, the restaurants Seafoods, buffets, you know, uh, fast food. You uh, know you I mean? Sushi. I mean, like, they've got, we got Italian. We've, I mean, and even, you know, check out our video, Top 10 Restaurants in Downtown Myrtle Beach for a, a, a private tour really of some of the nice little hidden gems in our city as far as restaurants go. Yeah. There's some great there's some great restaurants on that video. Great restaurants, great restaurants. But when you talk about having say a million people here in summertime, you know, and we may only have about 30 or 40 restaurants that we can put in that upper echelon. That's right. And, you know, so somebody saying, well, I really want to go out for a dinner, my anniversary dinner. That's right. And I want to pick a great place. And you either might can't get in those few that are yep. available. That's right. And you don't really have the choices of and the, the range of restaurants, higher end, nicer restaurants, quality food. You know, we have a lot of great restaurants, but we may not have the number. If you're used to New York City, if you're new, used to Chicago, we're not going to be your favorite place. As far as restaurants go, yeah. So there, there, there are not a lot of places that two people go and spend 300 or more dollars. No. I mean, no. like, there's not a lot of those. They're just no. not. Uh, so if you're looking for that type of restaurant, you're going to, you know, you might be hard pressed in our market to find that. Yeah, that's true. Run in your restaurants, but not those type of restaurants. Exactly. So guys, if you like the content that you've been receiving on our channel, Living in Myrtle Beach, please tap the bell for notifications and subscribe below 
so, so, so that you can be the first to learn about market changes in Myrtle Beach. Now, again, we get calls and emails every day from people just like you and you and you and you and you looking to make that move to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So whether you're one month or three years out, no matter where you are in that buying process, please send us a text message, shoot us an email, hop on a call, or jump on a live Zoom conference call, uh, all in the description below. Well, this is Brandon Cunisac and Randy Wallace, broker in charge here at Keller Williams, signing off with the Living in Myrtle Beach channel. Thanks so much for hanging out with us.